This is the Mind of the Meanie. Here are your hosts, the Blue Meanie and Adam Barnard. Peace world and welcome everybody to the Mind of the Meanie, your weekly peek into the world according to former WWE superstar and ECW original, the Blue Meanie. We cover wrestling, music, movies, sports, and lots and lots of useless knowledge all contained in the Mind of the Meanie. I am your tour guide, Adam Barnard, and he is the Blue Meanie. Meanie! What's on your mind? The Human Torch was denied a bank loan. <laughs> the arsonist has oddly shaped feet. <laughs> uh, Anchorman will never be old. It, it, that's what we used to do before we had memes, man. We would stand around in a circle and just quote Anchorman to each other in the, in the olden times. Yeah, dude, I, uh, I went and saw Anchorman in a theater. And then uh, I, I was in California somewhere. And I was going to get a haircut. And, uh, you know, person is cut my hair and then I hear like, like a conversation over at the next station and then the lady goes, you know, we went and saw that movie Anchorman and, uh, it was no good. You know, my, my son doesn't like it. And, uh, you know, he's seven. So whatever he says, he does, I, I, I usually just go, you know, take his word for it. I'm like, I almost got up out of my chair and, you know, mid haircut and just walked out. I was like, really? You took you a know, seven-year-old to see Anchorman? That too, besides that, you know, I didn't even put that in there, you know, because, you know, I'm a kid. I'm watching yeah. stuff <laughs> I shouldn't be watching. You know, Midnight on Prism in South Philly. Oh, yo, dude. Yep. With Cinderella comes on at uh, a... <laughs> What was that other show? What was the other one? Emmanuel in space? Was that was that was one of them, wasn't it? There's was Emmanuel and Lady <laughs> Chappelle. That's right. Which uh yep. one, one of the Lady Chatter Chatterleys had uh Batman, uh what's his name? The original Batman. Um uh Adam West. Bert, Adam West. TV's, How much TV, TV's Adam Wee. You'd be think Burt Ward was uh Robin. Robin. Yep. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they were horrible. But I mean, you're, you're a kid. You're like, Mur. <laughs> you're just sitting at the TV, like, here we go. Everybody's asleep. I'm gonna watch the shit I shouldn't be watching. That's some classic, like South Philly fucking Delco shit right there. <laughs> I can smell my grandmother's basement thinking about this right now. Sitting way too close to the TV because you can turn the volume up, you know? <laughs> yeah. didn't have, they didn't have wireless headphones then. There was nothing. You had to turn that shit all the way down because you didn't want to get caught. And I swear to God, you were right fucking there on that screen, man. They had to, you know, they were, my grandparents had, they were they had the typical like South Philly Delco setup where they had the big fucking wooden TV yep. that was from the 60s. And that oh, was yeah. broken. So they put another one on top of it instead of moving it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. I have a uh, full stereo cabinet that I have that I had to put an end table on and put a TV on. Well, I had to, I put my widescreen on there. I realized I couldn't lift up the thing to play records. So I got a end table and put it in the middle as an extension and then put my TV on that so I can open up the, uh, the cabinet to play records. So it's like, oh, man. I got it. It, I ain't judging. No, man. Hey, listen, get it, get it where you can, folks, and watch it where you could. I was I far too young to be watching that. I mean, I, I God, all the movies and shit that I watched as a kid and TV shows. I mean, we were watching Wayne's World. I mean, what that movie come out in 90, 90, 91? Watching, I was Dude, probably five or six. No, what, no fucking way I should have been watching that movie. I discovered fucking George Carlin at my uh, aunt and uncle's house in Northeast Philly. And uh, this was like Carlin at Carnegie. Oh, wow. This is like the early days of HBO when they would just play it all the time and it was on. I'm watching it and they're just like swearing and all that stuff. And uh, my grandparents, they really, you know, go, oh, you can't watch that. You know, and uh, like, I'm going to like the local video store and, and running the new specials when they would come out and be great. Yep. You know, but yeah, you know, yeah, I watched things that, you know, you know, uh, I probably shouldn't have been. But then <laughs> And here I am, you know, 50 years old, and I have uh, a great, you know, my niece's kids. And I know what they're watching. I'm like, oh, how can you let them watch that? And I'm like thinking back to what I watched. I was like, oh, well, that's kind of tame, you know? <laughs> you know? I, I was sitting here thinking about, um, oh, God, what was it? It was Wayne's World, and it was something else we used to watch when we were kids. And there's just 
No reason to, but like now that I have kids and you know, like George, like my parents, my mom would let us listen to Howard Stern. Um, we were just talking about that. Also in the Patreon group, you got a whole, we had a whole pre-show before we started the show where we were talking about Stern and, and big up and Baba Booey. Uh, so patreon.com slash mind of the meeting. Hello, hello. Guess who? If you want, <laughs> if you want to hear that and watch that video, you can go right now to patreon.com slash mind of the meeting and sign up today. Tears starting at only $10 and you can join us here. But <laughs> Um, yeah, I was just thinking about how many times I would listen to Stern as a, as a, as a child. And I think back to like, my oldest is 10 now. And I'm like, I was probably, I was younger than him listening to Stern for the first time. And I'm like, there's no fucking way I would yeah. let, and I'm not a prude or anything, but it's just like, I don't know. He's just a, he's a kid. Like, I don't want him listening to that just yet. Carlin will start introducing pretty soon, you know, cause he's, he's becoming a man now. So I'm sure he can learn the seven dirty words, but you know, it's, we're getting there. We're, we're getting close to that. I think so. Oh. Carlin was the king, man. The um, fucking king, man. But yeah, Anchorman will never, <clears throat> never is never going to not be funny. Um, oh no, I I I I, I pretend that part, Anchorman two doesn't exist. Yep. But, so yeah, yeah, it's like uh, no, nah, it doesn't. It just it's it's good in its own little world, which is why I'm glad that like. I know there was talk about them doing Step Brothers too, which I was like, I don't need to see a fucking another Step Brothers. Like this movie was is so good on its own. I don't need anything to sully the good name of this movie. So, Anchorman came out, and then uh, there was like a, maybe a blockbuster exclusive, oh. where they made they made another movie out of all the the uh, extra footage because they shot so much footage. Yeah, they made like a, it was called Wake Up Ron Burgundy. Or something like that, and they took Anchorman and put in all the you know unreleased footage, yeah, you know all the uh, cutting room floor footage, and it made this whole other movie, which was actually just as funny. That's so amazing. It, it, you know, this is you know when like a you know you think of a, like a band, you know that comes out, you know they have their whole life to uh, to um, you know write their first album. You know, yeah, and I always think. I always think, you know, hey, while you're in the studio, just record everything. Record like three albums worth of shit. So when you put out your second album, it sounds almost as good as or even better than the, the first album or whatever. But, you know, bands, you know, do their first album, they go on tour and they come back and they do another album and it, it's either hit or miss. So what, yeah. but what, what you know, why, why, while the iron's hot, record fucking everything. Right. While you're in that creative juice, like just create it all yeah. at one shot. Um, ba uh, Andrew Bailey's in the chat right now and he's talking about the other guys, which is one of my favorite flick, not just Will Ferrell flicks, but one of my favorite comedy flicks, I think probably in the past 20 years. Um, Did you shoot G? <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you had a desk pop? Uh, December <laughs> last year. <laughs> Gator, yeah. you just got back, you punk ass bitch. What a fucking <laughs> hilarious movie. I need to rewatch that. So good. It's a fun fact. My wife and I, Courtney, uh, Mrs. Goober, that was the first movie we went on a date to go see. And she did not think Will Ferrell was funny in that movie. And I was like, I don't know how this is, the relationship is going to work. But, oh, you know. Oh, I bombed out. <laughs> the first first movie I took Mrs. Meany to see, I was like, oh, yeah, this is Movie looks. I took her to see fucking Siriana. Siriana. It was like a fucking George Clooney like movie. And, you know. Oh like, man, yes, from two thousand and five. And I'm like halfway through the movie. I'm like, oh man, I am bombing out with this fucking movie. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot about this flick. Not a romantic comedy. Not a comedy. You know, let's take a movie where George Clooney's getting tied up and having his fingernails forcibly removed. Oh, you know, just, I was like, oh, I <laughs> carumba. Like yeah. Wolf. It's funny, man. He's, he's probably thinking that I mean, oh, this relationship. I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm sitting there staring at Courtney. I'm just pissing myself laughing at this movie. And she's like, I'm like, what do you think? This movie's great. She's like, uh-huh. Okay. I'm like, What? How can you not? This is funny. It happens a lot, even still. Like, there's movies that I love that she's never watched. We watched um, uh, The 25th Hour with uh, Spike Lee. It was a Spike Lee movie, and it's Ed Norton, Barry Pepper, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Like, just an incredible flick, right? Great, um, great movie. Great movie. For the uninitiated, it's uh, Edward Norton plays uh, Monty Brogan, who's a drug dealer. 
uh, got pinched and he's going to, to do federal, I don't know if it's federal time or, or state time in the pen and he's going away for like seven years. And um, it's his last legit 24 hours outside of the pen. And I mean, just an incredible movie, like just a hell of a cast too. Um, really, really well done. Love that kind of movies. And she sat there, we're watching it and, you know, getting through the movie. And I was like, so what did you think? Like, I'm just, I'm, I just enthralled in this flick, right? Just sucked into it. And she's like, yeah, it's, you know, not my favorite. She's like, you have a theme with these kind of movies. You have a, you have a, you have a, t- a typical type of movie you watch. I was like, this movie was so fucking good. How could you not like this movie? Yeah. So we're still fighting about it, man. Still fighting about those movies, but yeah. Yeah, we we uh, yeah, I, well, I can relate. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just totally bombed out with Syriana. I was like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> I should have known it was when I was playing the art RT theater near Center City, you know, and you know, but uh, yeah. Well, I will have to go. I want to go back and watch it because I haven't seen that movie in in quite a long time, uh, and I'm a Matt Damon fan, so I'll, I'm sure I'll enjoy it. But Matt Damon, Matt Damon. <laughs> Poor fucking guy wrote one of the best movies of the nineties. <laughs> He's known for saying Matt David. <laughs> Matt David. No matter what he does, I'm sure it's going to be stuck to him for like glue forever. What well, the, the the rumor is that like one of those Matt Damons was actually Matt Damon. Really? Yeah. How like we- they had they they had a him record one of the random ones and kind of have to guess which one it is you know i wouldn't be surprised because they do that trey parker matt stone matt stone did that shit all the time like uh george clooney oh, yeah. speaking of clooney george clooney is like a close friend of theirs he and- uh was the dog in he well he was in the he was he was in one of the early or he either saw the first cartoon that they did before like the the it was like an underground thing like yeah it's kind of like a jerky boys thing where somebody just dubbed the tape, dubbed the tape, you know, passed this tape around of you know, Jesus versus Santa Claus. And either George Clooney saw it or he was like a voiceover on it or something like that. But he helped uh, the South Park guys, you know, he, he he was taking them around to the studios because he believed in them. He did the dog. He did Sparky the dog. I think it was in the first right. season. And I remember reading about it and being like, wow. And it, like, you know, they gave him the graphic and it's like, George Clooney plays the dog. And their whole thing was like, you have these celebrities on, you know, getting these big spots on these shows. And he's like, they're like, what's funnier for us than having like an A-lister, like a real deal A-lister playing a dog, <laughs> like a voice. Seinfeld, apparently, the rumor and innuendo is that Seinfeld wanted to do a spot on the show and they were like, all right, well, we'll, we'll have you on the Thanksgiving show, but you're going to voice a turkey, like turkey number three. And he was like, I'm not doing that. I'm Jerry Seinfeld. And he backed out of it. And I was like, that's hilarious. That is so fucking absurd and, and great. Like, so good, man. It was like the old Batman show when people would just like, they would always have like these guest appearances you know, when Batman and Robin are climbing up the side of a building with on a with a rope and they would have a, like a random celebrity stick their head out the window just hey, what's going on out here? You know, and <laughs> you know, they, they could have done that with the uh with South Park, you know, with the random voices and guess guess the voice, you know. <laughs> I love it, man. I, I just I it's such good shit, man. Um, how are you otherwise? What's been going on with the meanie recently, man? Uh, shout out to, uh, Road Dog and Cassio Kid over at Ad Free Shows. And, well, it's, they have Ad Free and then they have the normal, uh, ad show, which is on the, the Road Dogs, Oh, You Didn't Know, uh, YouTube, uh, for having me on. We uh, had a really good conversation. Um, real fun. Uh, we, we, we did about two hours and we easily could have, easily could have went like another two hours just catching up with each other. So I want to thank them for having me on. And, uh, you know, Road Dog's a great guy. Um, like I said on the episode, he, like, one of the few guys, like, one of the first guys to be cool. I mean, I, there was cool guys up there, you know, you know, that I worked with. But, like, you know, uh, he, he was just, like, a cool... It, it's weird that, like... Because I told him, you know, you were one of the first cool, I have to say cool guys like 48 times in a row now. But um, and he's like, man, I, you know, most people, you know, I always thought I, he said he always thought he was like the kind of like bully the people, which is funny because like all the guys who were like 
notorious for, you know, being perceived as tough guys or hard asses, you know, or the guys I got along with, you know, like, you know, uh, Bob Holly had a reputation of, you know, being a, you know, badass and tough guy, but we got along great. You know, and then Road Dog, you know, know, saying, you know, he thought he was a dick to people. Yeah, I thought he was awesome to me. So, uh, something. It's so weird to think, like, that's one thing I don't think I've ever heard about Road Dog is that he was a dick. Yeah, he's, you know, because, and we, I joked about this with uh, Road Dog. I was like, yeah, you're having your, my name is Earl phase where you have to go back and, uh, apologize you're, you're going back to make amends with people and he said uh you know i, I sat down with edge and christian and i apologized to them for everything i did to them they're like no you were fine x-pac was the jerk you know <laughs> which to me i doubt i i always got along with x-pac yeah. x-pac was always like all the people who had problem with other people like, those people were always cool to me you know them but it's it was it was a great conversation uh I, I talk with Casio Kid almost daily, mm. and uh, I hadn't talked to. I see Road Dog at conventions, and we get along great, and have you know our pleasantries. But to actually just sit down and it's kind of like cool, just catching up with each other and just getting to talk in a non-show atmosphere. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're at a convention, you're real busy and hectic, and you don't want to ignore you know the the people who are bringing you into the show. And, uh, you know, when you're at a, a show show, you, you know, you're busy with your match and stuff and you got time for, you know, small talk here and there, but to have like a real cool in-depth conversation with a dog and, and we had a lot of laughs on the show. So if you get a chance to go over to, uh, the, oh, you didn't know, uh, YouTube page and, uh, check it out about two hours long to, uh, 208 with ads and I was just told, uh, as we're recording this on Friday night, uh, June 30th, 2023, at 8.48 p.m., I was just given a hint that they're going to be doing like the uh, solo clips to uh, put up on the YouTube too. So a lot of good talk and a lot of good conversation, which you know we have here each and every week on Mind and the Meanie. Of course. With our, with our pod squad and the... Uh, Got the uh, chat going on here and stuff like that. So go to patreon.com slash mind of the meeting and join, join the club, join the gang and have some conversation. But, uh, yeah, just, uh, very grateful to, uh, be on with the, uh, dad free family and yep. the pod squad. I mean, the, uh, pod father, the pod father network, you know, yep. so, <laughs> and, uh, we don't, you know, listen, we don't, we don't get any kickbacks or anything from ad free shows for plugging them. But like, if you're a wrestling fan, and you enjoy what we do and listening to wrestling shows, wrestling related shows, you should definitely check out ad free shows. It's the, it's, you know, it's, they have incredible tears to get in. Um, and it's the best money you can spend outside of joining us on Patreon. And I, they're just incredible. Yeah. Lots of great stuff. I'll link the, uh, the episode uh, here in the show notes. If you're listening to this, you'll be able to click on it on the YouTube and pull it right up. So I uh, also want to give myself a shout out to the, uh, to yeah. Jeff at the high spot podcast for having me on this week. Uh, we did an uh, Instagram live video talking about my uh, viral thread about Jay Uso and the bloodline. So go ahead and check that out. Uh, Very his cool. podcast, let me just pull it up real fast because I want to make sure I'm giving the right analysis here. Um, that podcast on Instagram is called, uh, their handle is High Spot Podcast. So go and check them out there. The video is pinned to the top of the page. Uh, so thank you, Jeff, and this team over there. Looking forward to having them on the show again. But uh, yeah, always a good time, man. Um, I'm very excited to hear you guys, a couple of Attitude Era guys, you know, chop it up about anything. You know, it's, it's always, that stuff is always interesting to me. Well, in the Attitude Era, everything was just so, everything's just moving fast. And like, it's moving fast and you didn't really get a chance to just like take a breath, you know, very yeah. uh, intense times so to speak. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that happen to me. I would talk to people there. There's a lot, there's a lot of things I don't remember. And I was there, you know, and same with ECW, just be a part of ECW during the hottest era. And then going to WWE during their hottest era in the history of wrestling for both companies. 
it's just ama- it's amazing what you think you remember and then you go back and watch something you're like holy shit why well, did that yeah you know um but you know it, you know i you know, i was telling the road dog the, the things you know he was cool with me about he he said he didn't remember but he take my word out of it but you know just it, it's awesome it's awesome to say that i was i, I got to be a part of those yeah I, those those errors, you know. Yeah, I mean, and you your your stamp is on it, like you're there, and it's just it's it's cool to, it's something that no matter what you do, you're you're always going to be a part of, and people are always going to remember that really amazing time, and it's just cool, man. Again, like I I tell you all the time, every time I'm out wearing the BWO shirt, or every time I talk about the podcast, and I I stop a stranger in the store, and I'm like, are you a wrestling fan? You know, and and they're like, get away from me, and I'm like, wait, 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 no. <laughs> Stop talking to me. No, I'm just kidding. But like, you know, I, I tell people like, oh, you know, the Blue Mini from ECW. Oh, the Blue Mini, that's fucking awesome, man. You know, like you are a, a renowned, uh, you know, and and loved individual in the history of the sport. So it's it's just cool to see you get, you know, getting to talk about that stuff. It's just, it's it's a lot of fun. So. I appreciate that. Of course. I guess, I guess the, the uh, you know, one of the few things that's like a, kind of a bummer is just like, uh, I always heard veterans would talk about yeah, man. Once you leave WWE, you go on in these and make a killing. Mm. And uh, now I get re- got released from WWE, and you know I went back to ECW for a little bit. ECW closed, and then I, you know I go out to do the indies. I'm thinking, all right, here here comes the, the tidal wave of indie dates, and then WWE goes out of business, and then like the, the floodgates open where, you know, instead of being the guy who's fresh off of, you know, TV. I'm in there with a ton of, I mean, it's like a swimming pool, you know, like mm-hmm. you think you're only in a swimming pool and, you know, 40 people come and do cannonballs next to you and you're just trying to stay afloat. Yeah. So like, I wish I could have experienced that part of there, like, just going out and going and doing every indie and stuff like that, you know, but, uh, you know, I had no, I say regret, but it wasn't a regret, you know, but, uh, just something I wish I could have done, you know? Yeah. You know, I don't have regrets because, you know, you know, do I wish I went to WCW? Yeah, I had a chance. Mm. But I was like, you know, hey, I'll go back to uh, ECW. Thinking, you know, you're trying to, it's like playing the fucking stock market. Yeah. You know, you're like, oh, okay, you're looking at, you know, WCW, you're like, okay, they're kind of coming off 83 weeks high, uh, the NWO high. They're, they're, they're kind of like, on the back foot, ECW, they just got a video game. Right. Just, oh my God, they just got national TV. You know, if I could get back in there and, and get on that next wave of whatever ECW is about to do, but then you learn how much damage that Nashville network, the Nashville network, yeah, it was the yeah. Nashville network. Yeah. And before, they went, before they went to the national network. You, you realize how much damage that show actually did for the company as far as just draining them financially. Mm. Uh, so Now, let me ask you a question because I'm, I'm, I'm not too familiar with the history, and I apologize if, if you've already spoken about yeah. this, but um, as far as ECW on TNN, was that similar to the WCW th- Thunder situation where, like, Paul had to pay to have TNN, on, like, to... to basically pay a shit ton of money out of pocket to have this show um, air. How much did, do you know? I don't know if you know the specifics, but like what was, what was the situation there that caused it to be such a drain for ECW? Well, I, I mean, ECW had been just doing an hour show a week out of, you know, Ron and Charlie studio in New York. You know, they did, they would record a show and go in and, and cut it up and put it out every week. Well, with the TNN deal, they wanted them to have a, you know, record it live to tape. Mm. And that means you know, you have to hire a, you know, get a production truck, which we didn't do in ECW. You had to go... Uh, have a director. They didn't, you know, he wanted, you know, uh, Ron, and, you know, he wanted um, Ron mm. uh, to Ron Buffon to be the director and they wanted their own director and it became a battle over who's going to direct the show. It became all these other things that like were such a distraction from focusing on the product that when you actually got to have a wrestling show, you're like, you know, 
you're paying for and you're paying for production trucks, you're paying for extra production, you're paying for this, that, and the other thing, and you know, it just became a financial drain. Mm. And you know, they weren't advertising the show; they were advertising Roller Jam, which uh, you know, it was a it was a, a, a Roller Jam was like on. You know, in South Philly, like Roller Jam was on buses, it was on, you know, billboards, this, that, and the other thing. You saw you didn't get one billboard, that's didn't get one commercial. Crazy. That's crazy. And, it, and then it, it, it was doing a 1.0. It was like doing really good ratings. If they had put as much infrastructure or advertising into ECW as they did Roller Jam, ECW could have easily been, a, a, you know, a strong three or number two. Wow. If, if, you know, TNN decided to put money into the show. That's but crazy. Each of you had to foot the bill for everything. Ah, uh, I mean, no wonder it went. Like, it's just, it's amazing to hear and learn stuff, like, in the background that it was happening. I had no idea that that was the cause of a lot of the, the headaches that was going on in ECW at the time. Um, I it, wasn't there for all of it. You know, I was still right. on WWE and I'm watching their, I'm like, oh shit, they're on TV. Let me watch this and look great and all that stuff. Mm. First night, you know, there was an argument, you know, disagreement over, uh, you know, the quality of the show. So at our protest, Paul just put up Robin M versus Jerry Lynn from, uh, you know, Poughkeepsie. <laughs> like, here, here's a show. Yeah. All right. Here you go. You know, just, it was like a middle finger to the, the network, but, <laughs> you know. Do you have any? Uh, do you have any idea what they like? Would they have brought the Blue Meanie character into WCW, or did they have like a like a hardcore hack style different gimmick for you coming in? Well, it didn't even, it didn't even get to that. I see. It's like uh, when WWE released me, Bruce Pitchard said, "Hey, Meanie, uh, it was a pleasure. You know, we gotta let you go. It was a pleasure working with you. You, you never complained. You did everything we asked you of you. It's just a matter if we don't have anything for you, which." They said everybody's like, if you want, I could call JJ Dillon and see if they would want you over at WCW. And like an idiot, I went, uh, I think I'm going back to ECW. Which, in hindsight, you go, oh yeah, Bruce, please call JJ <laughs> and you can get like whatever kind of deal they offer you. If they got out of business and they, you know, whatever your deal is, they got paid the, 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 they could pay the, the rest of the contract while you're, if WWE doesn't pick up the contract, then, you know, they pay you the rest of the deal. Right. And then, then on the download, just do some indies and double dip, you know? For sure. You get that Turner money coming in? For sure, man. Yeah. When Sandman, Sandman left WCW and went back to ECW, WCW forgot to stop paying him. Really? And he, he was going to check from Paul and WCW simultaneously. <laughs> Lucky bastard. Yeah, I don't know when when they eventually caught on or when they, you know, were like, oh shit, uh, let's stop that. Right, right. But uh, yeah, they, um, they forgot to stop paying him. He's like, yeah, it's just double dipping. <laughs> hey, hey, look, I'm not going to say anything. No harm, no foul, as far as I'm concerned. Um, no, that's it's uh it's that's a uh, it's an unfortunate turn of events for them. I wonder how different things could have been. Doing a million yeah. without any real publicity is that's quite a feat. Just to, just on on you know word of mouth alone, that's a that's a pretty incredible accomplishment. On reputation and just yeah, I mean WWE just they start realizing they were. I mean uh, ECW start realizing they were the. Uh, the science experiment, you know, right. to see how wrestling would do in their network. And then they went and gave a shit ton of money to WWE to bring their product over from USA Network. Yeah. Which I think was really so, the, that was kind of the, if, if, if I, I feel like, and again, I could be just, you know, pontificating, but I feel like if, if the lack of advertising and the money that Paul was spending on the TNN show and not getting any ROI on that, if that wasn't going to kill the, 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 pro, the promotion, Losing that TV deal definitely exacerbated it and put it into full full throttle, and that's that's a really shitty thing. Really, like hindsight, like business wise, it's like, well, okay, maybe, but like you have hundreds of people out of out of work now. You know what I mean? It's just it it's just fucked. So, 
think about all the technology that there is today with like YouTube and Fight TV or, you know, crowdfunding and stuff like that or going viral, you yeah. know? Yeah. You see, I've been like this viral TV show and making millions of dollars. You know, if Logan Paul can make a million dollars just doing whatever he does. Yeah. And that's not, I, don't, I legit don't know what he does. But, not, uh, couldn't, no fucking idea. Not a clue. No, he made a lot of money on YouTube. I mean, ECW, that product. And towards the end, ECW was kind of going away from uh, the blood and guts stuff and going, I think, you know, uh, ECW would have been Ring of Honor before Ring of Honor. Mm. You know, it's strong style, faster pace action. Well, I mean, already had the fast pace action, but less, you know, furniture. Right. Right. What I think. Know, I think too, like I think about the the moment where Bam Bam and Taz went through the ring. You know, it was part of that that open in in for the, the, the uh, iconic open of, of ECW. That yeah. very easily could have been a very like one of the very first viral wrestling moments. And yeah. I hear a lot of times people talk about um, you know whether or not these promotions could exist now. You know, twenty some odd years later, of course they could. WCW, yeah. like, like imagine the NWO happening in 2022, 2023. Of course it could. ECW, there's a huge market for people uh, for that type of wrestling, that, that, that avenue. Of course it could. It, it just, it's a matter of how you would utilize the technology. And knowing Paul, you know, not knowing him personally, but like understanding a little bit of what he did, like he could have easily worked that, that you, you know, here's something I'm putting on YouTube. You know, like he could have fucking killed it. Yeah. So. No, he said, be, you know, when you think about like all these alternative things like the X Games and the Warp Tour, you know, he said, be, could have been to wrestling with the Warp Tour was to music and X Games were to, you know, you know, um, skateboarding and all that. Yeah. 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 You know, with the X Games are almost like yeah, as big as the Olympics or even better, you mm-hmm. know, just. The Warp Tour, you know, you go, you go to see a lot of upcoming bands with a lot of legends and stuff like that. That could have been like an ECW. Yeah, and had they had that technology back then, you know. Yeah, it's unbelievable to think about. It. I think it, it would have been amazing, and I think I still, I, 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 st- I still think there wouldn't have been room for an AEW, you know, like another promotion. Because again, like every any, the more wrestling companies, the better, because that means lots of people are working and there's lots of opportunity, right? So I think that it definitely could have it definitely could have done something. I'm sure it would have been great. I mean, I you know, I was I'm a lifelong WWE fan, but man, you put on fucking ECW at whatever time we could put it on <laughs> down in Delco there at my grandma's house. You better believe my fat ass was sitting there watching that shit, man. I did not miss an episode if I had if I had anything to do. But yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, think of all the memories people still talk about. Yeah, you think of everything that. So, you know, came after ECW and I can't think of like one storyline worth going, I'll oh, remember when this, that, and the other thing, you know, mm-hmm. I guess maybe like the most, you know, the, the one thing that kind of caught, you know, made, you know, traction was, you know, the ace and the aces and eights, you know, that was a pretty, right. Pretty good angle. Pretty, that was a hot angle. Yeah. You know, it was a, it was almost like a mainstream thing where, like, you know, uh, when you when you got the casual fans, that's right. when you know something. You know, you, the hardcores, the diehards will always be there. Yeah, the the wrestlers, you know, the wrestling fans still watch everything, even if they say they hate it, they watch it just to hate it. Yep, there's an but entire get- Twitter sphere, a network of people that 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 make money off of doing things like that. So and. I just saw a really good uh, video of MGF where he said, you know, the Twitterverse or, you know, the, the social, that's 7% of the wrestling fan base, you know, it's, it's pretty small. And also, you know, I forget, I wish I remember who said that there's, you know, somebody was talking to somebody and guy's like, yeah, my, my Twitter's blowing up over what we did. And he went to look at the guy's thing and, you know, he might, might've had like eight likes or <laughs> Uh, it's like a couple mentions. Is is that blowing up? Yeah. Uh, are you more worried about the seven people on social media or the you know the twenty thousand are sitting out there in their in their arena? You know. 
Well, it's funny you mentioned that because it's like, I think about, you mentioned you brought up TNA too with, with aces and eights. And I think about how much people shit on TNA. Like, you know, Conrad talks about it all the time, the LOL TNA phenomenon. I remember I watched TNA when it was happening and Kurt Angle and, and Steiner and, and Samoa Joe. And like, that was really good shit. Like there was really solid, like the X division. And like, there was so much good wrestling on that program. And yeah. I, when I think back and I think back about how like this, this negative stereotype people have about it, I'm like, yo, go back and watch some of that shit. Like it was really like, I'm a, I'm a Samoa Joe fan. I love everything the guy does, but like, if they would have given them an opportunity, if people would have given them an opportunity instead of being like, oh, you know, whatever, like, I really think they could have done something. I don't know. I just, it, it, it feels like unnecessarily nasty to, to look back on that and, and, you know, shit on everything. Obviously not every company is going to have something great all the time, but like, God damn. I mean, there was, I mean, th- th- like a huge majority of Sting's career after WCW is there. So like, how can you, how can you hate on it? But no. Yeah. I mean, it was it, gave, it was a great place. It gave a lot of people some places to work. It's just like the the management end of it just kept dropping the ball. Yeah, you know they they were it seemed like they were doing their uh, their talent a disservice. You know these guys are killing each other and you know um, whatever. I, I wasn't there, so I can't really say. But you know when you're D- Dixie uh, Carter's doing. Uh, talent meetings and put them on TV as like their, if their angles, you know, and dressing the uh, talent down and showing the talent just sitting there like eating it, you know, it's just like, oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's horrible for morale. You know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I can't imagine being somebody in the, in the locker room, just trying to get on TV to wrestle and, and live my dream. And I've got to deal with this fucking shit, you know? So, yeah. I mean, you know, again, no, not not every company is perfect, and 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 lots of people made mistakes. Some unfortunately made more than others, but um, you know, it's like I said, it's 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 it would have been interesting to see if ECW had survived all the way through to right now to where they would have been, and and, and you know, it's exciting to think about. You know, I don't like the fantasy book too much, but it's it's exciting uh, to me, think about. I'm not I'm not a big fantasy booker, but you know, what could. It, what if, I mean, what if Tony Khan grew up to buy the company he loved? Yeah. Maybe he, he would go and buy ECW, you know, instead of, instead of starting AEW, mm-hmm. you know, maybe all that talent that he gathered to start AEW would have already been in ECW, you know, right. there's, a, there's a lot of talent that was almost going to be in ECW if had it survived, you know, like Trent Acid and, you know, guys showing up to, uh, potentially be the next stars, you know? Yeah. And, um, it's a shame, you know, Joey Mercury, Christian York, those guys were going to be the next fresh faces of ECW. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there, there would have been an influx of talent, you know, those guys would eventually become the leaders and the veterans. Right. And, uh, you know, who, you know, if the young bucks come along and they would, it would join ECW and become the next wave of talent. Yeah. You know, there, there's so much you they could have been done. And then, you know, Tony, you know, you know, goes on and by he, he could have been the guy next guy to either invest in ECW or buy it, you know? Right. So, you know, there's so many, what could have happened had the TNN deal, not, you know, no, not the Nashville network deal fucking had not killed ECW. Yeah. Meanie. Yes, sir. Baseball is back, and I know everyone wants to hit a home run, but you can't do that when your untrimmed bush is starting to look like Wrigley Field. Get your game on point with Manscaped, and you can start start scoring on and off the field with their top-notch grooming products trusted by 8 million men worldwide. Grab some Cracker Jacks, a hot dog, and a lawnmower 4.0, and let's play ball don't forget to use the promo code MindMeany for 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. And Meany, I want to ask you, since we love baseball here at the program and we also love our sp- sponsors, Manscaped, how have they helped you keep your baseballs clean? Hey, I just turned 50. Uh, this is my 50th uh, summer or, or around the sun, and uh, I'm all about the Weed Whacker 2.0. Let me tell you, man. Uh, I'm getting a little bit older there, so the, the nose hairs and the ear hairs are becoming a little bit more prominent. I need to, to trim those bad boys because when I sneeze, 
nose nose hairs sound like a, the crack of a bat off of shore bomb. So uh, the Weed Whacker 2.0 has been keeping me looking good on the mound. I love that uh, analogy there, sir. Manscaped has the full package for your package this season. The Performance Package 4.0 checks off every box and is the five-star tool that you've been searching for for your balls club. To start it off, the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer is getting hyped as the Bryce Harper of trimmers, and after using it, my confidence level is sky high. In and out quickly to get the job done in just a few minutes, meaning something that Rob Manfred can't say about anything. Also including <laughs> is the Weed Whacker. The nose and ear hair trimmer provides proprietary skin-safe technology, which helps prevent nicks, snags, and tugs in all of those delicate holes. Going up to the plate against Zach Wheeler is tough enough. Dehair your nostrils this season with the Weed Whacker 2.0 so you can take your best shot at it. Rumor and innuendo, meaning... I don't know if you heard this, but that the, one of the league's biggest issues during the lockout was legalizing the use of ball deodorant and ball toner for players. Did you hear that? In the offseason, it was a hot stove topic. I've heard that, but luckily you don't have to worry about getting kicked out of the league for having clean and good smelling balls with Manscaped. The Crop Preserver is an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer, which we both know when we're sitting up there in the stands at Citizens Bank, eating our hot dogs and our federal donuts, the chafing is real life, sir. And the Crop Reviver spray on toner for your balls because you never know when you're going to need a little pep in your step to be at the top of your game. Clean up the way below the waist this year in 2023 with the best lineup from Manscaped. Trim your bat and balls and get into the MVP discussion this season. Most valuable player, of course, with the promo code MINDMEANY for 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the promo code MINDMEANY at manscaped.com. And we want to thank, as always, Manscaped for sponsoring the program. Thank you. I, uh, I would have loved to have seen... MJF in ECW. And I know, oh, we've, yeah. I know we've, we've kind of touched on that before in some of our ass meanies, which again, you can go find all of this, the good shit that Meanie and I do together here every Monday in your ears, all right? In your ears and in your minds. You can find that at mindofthemeanie.com. But I know, I feel like MJF would have been just fucking unbelievable. Like imagine like no restrictions. You know what I mean? Like just go out and do whatever you want to do kind of thing. Nothing, yeah. and I mean, he could have. He could have been. Fuck, that would have been amazing. Um, yeah. So I guess we have a question here from one of the Pod Squad members. I know we talked about this a little bit today, and uh, wanted to bring it up earlier, but we got into some you know lighter topics. But um, we lost Darren Drozdov today, uh, and he passed away today. He was fifty four years old. Um, loved watching him wrestle. Loved you know. I love the Prince Albert storyline. Like, I don't know. There was something about, something like rock and roll about that whole thing that I just, I gravitated to. And I just, I was like, man, this guy's great, you know? And um, tragic incident that happened uh, in the ring with D'Lo Brown. And, you know, he, he um, you know, lost the ability to walk. And, and you know, he just, it was just took it in stride and, and did a lot of wonderful things afterwards. I just wanted to give you the opportunity to share any stories or any thoughts about Draws and, and give you the floor. Yeah, man. Uh, I got new, the news today. About, you know, I started hearing murmurs that draws had passed, and it's like, well, who's who's saying this? Let's figure this out, and then it, it started picking up steam. And I, apparently, uh, I guess uh, you know, as of this recording, they they were doing SmackDown overseas, and since they were quite, they had done like a little tribute thing for draws at the beginning of SmackDown, like six hours before it aired here. So I started picking up steam and people start posting and I was like, oh man, that sucks. Um, he lives like 40, you know, 45 minutes from here. Oh wow. Now, uh, he's uh maze landing New Jersey, which is for 45 minutes to, uh, for it depends on, you know, that's, that's besides the point, you know, he, he was local South Jersey kid. Um, which is kind of a thing we bonded over. I first met Draws in ECW, you know, um, and I was just talking to Road Dog about this too, like you know, kind of like when we knew WWE was kind of, you know, we were under the WWE umbrella with ECW is when, you know, they would send talent from WWE down to work in ECW to get an experience. And Draws was such a cool dude, man. Such a good guy, uh, Darren. I never called him there. I always call him Draws. But, uh, 
and you know, you, you get to work. I got to work on uh, ECW, then went to WWE, and we worked there together in, in uh, WWE. And uh, I got to have some really f- fun matches with him. Lots, uh, some good matches with him. Always, he was a great talent. Um, you know, he ca- he came from the world of football. Mm-hmm. You now he he had uh, played for the Broncos, and then I I. I didn't even know this, but you know, Mike Johnson said he played for the Jets and the Philadelphia Eagles, which maybe he just did training camp or whatever. But, um, you know, he, uh, tough guy, good football player. And then he had like one of the most notorious moments in, uh, Monday night football history where he's lined up, you know, against the, uh, he's lined up on the defense facing the, uh, the center who's about to snap the ball. And he threw up on the center's hands on uh, Monday Night Football, which became this thing of infamy. He would he pulled, later, a, pulled a McNabb before McNabb pulled a McNabb. Pretty much, <laughs> which kind of led to his war. And when he came to WWE, and Vince does the famous thing and Beyond the Mat, where he's like, yeah, "Here's the trash can. He's he's going up, puke. He's going up, puke." You know, and uh, <laughs> of course, he uh, he got a camera shy, uh, whatever, but. Uh, Draws, amazing guy, amazing uh, talent. Uh, and we were, you know, I got to know him not only from just ECW, not just from WWE, and we, we did a couple matches on indies as well. But, uh, you know, him being local, you know, we would be on the same flights and we just sit there and just talk and, you know, you know, shoot the shit. You know, uh, most recently, I got to see Draws again. He uh, did Icon, the Icons convention here in Philadelphia. He was there, and he, great spirit, man, smiling, laughing, telling jokes. And, um, you know, it's such a shame. You know, unfortunately, I was there the night of his accident. And, uh, I mean, this was a couple months after the Owen accident. And then the Draws incident happens, and... It, it, it was it was it was devastating to see, you know, um, and to see him get stretchered and then, you know, taken to the hospital. And then, you know, as I'm driving, I'm driving home. That was on uh, Nassau Coliseum in Long Island. As I'm driving home, I'm on the Jersey Turnpike, and I got you know I'm picking up Philly radio. I got KYW on, which is just a local news station, and they had picked up on it like the same night. Wow. And uh, that's when you're like, fuck, man, this is a big deal. I mean, yeah. it's horrible, but it's, it's picking up steam. So, you know, uh, they, they, that was going to be on SmackDown. They took it off of SmackDown and rightfully so. Absolutely. But, uh, Absolutely. but uh, you know, and the, and the biggest heartbreak about that, uh, the, you know, we all know Draws was, you know, paralyzed wrestling with uh, D'Lo. Yeah. And, it was unfortunate. It was it was a, a moment where his timing was off. He, he went to reset, and while he was trying to reset, D'Lo thought he was ready for the move. And it's it's something that's you know something I've encountered. You know, uh, there was a I was wrestling a guy named Vinny Magnetti, and uh, he did this thing where he would bump you into the corner, run, put his hands on your legs, flip up your body, sit up, and then Frankenstein you out. Mm. And then we were going to have him do it again in the match. And I was just going to walk out and do the sit-out powerbomb with him, kind of like D'Lo. But, you know, prior to us doing the, the spot the first time, I shot him in, went for the backdrop, and he went to kick me. But he booted me right in the f- fucking forehead. Mm. You can see the eyelets of his boots on my forehead and all that stuff. So I was a little groggy. So when he went to do it, I sat out kind of like... The incident with D'Lo. So I was like seeing it happen there and realize how fortunate I was that I didn't hurt somebody. Right. Like early in my career. Um, but, you know, uh, you know, draws transferred from uh, New York to Philly. It was here at Hospital Philly. Go, you could go visit him. Me, I would visit him. Headbangers would visit him. And uh, through all that, his spirits were high. He was not mad. He was not bitter. He was like, "Hey, man, it was, it was an accident." Oh, and, and also the the, the, the biggest uh, that whole day was you know we're in Long Island, Nassau Coliseum, 
and Dilo and Draws were just hanging out all day. And, you know, uh, you know, Dilo would travel with his PlayStation and a little TV and they would sit up. They were playing video games like that afternoon. They were playing some kind of racing game. And then, you know, they, they were going to, you know, work that night and whatever happened, happened. it was it was a crying shame, you know, what happened. Yeah. And, you know, my heart breaks for D'Lo too, that, you know, people can't just like let them go with it. You know, you know, Draws has got, Draws has, you know, if Draws is over it, you know, yeah, I think we can stop talking to D'Lo about it. But, uh, and you know, if I, if I could just cut in for a second, cause I was, I was thinking about that today oh, and, it, hey. and it reminded me of like the JBL questions that you get all the time. Yeah. And it's like, you can clearly see that this is an incredibly uncomfortable topic for D'Lo. You know, like I'm sure being asked about it like once or twice as you're doing the media rounds, like people are going to ask about it. But like you can see that it genuinely bothers him. And it's just like, do yep. we really need to continue to ask this man to relive this really difficult moment in his life? And he said, he said it a couple of times, it's the worst moment of his career. Do we really need to like, stick it you know like it just feels like it's unnecessarily cruel after a certain point and i just i, I you know let's yeah let the man move on from this and 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 let him you know be at peace with this because that's i can't imagine what that what that would have been like you know hey uh you know that worst day of your life let's talk about that <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. How about, how about this? I'll send you a link to a, a shoot interview I've done a million times and you can get your intro from that. You can Let's, just uh, pull the yeah. audio right from that. Next question. Uh, yeah, but uh, rest in peace, uh, Draws. Uh, on a, uh, I know a crazy side note, uh, dude I went to grade school with wound up being one of his caretakers for a little while. Wow. And kind of got us in touch, and I was, you know, I would talk to, you know, draws here and there, you know, uh, you know, through text. Like, you know, I would send a text, and his caretaker would read the text, read it to him, and he would reply and text it back to me. But uh, guy lived his, his his life, you know, as if he wasn't, you know, confined to mentally, as if he wasn't confined to that chair. He was still doing everything, you know. Yeah, and. Um, that's a good. That's a good uh, example to live by. You know, you can either live your life, adjust to your new life, or you can sit about, sit back, and wonder what you could have been doing had this thing not happened. You know, that, that could go for anything in life. You know, when, just when you think you have a bad, realize that you know draws in the prime of his life. You know, this is like twenty four years ago. You know, he's still a young dude. And newly married and all this stuff, and you know, having, having a dream job with WWE, yeah. And then this, this happens, and you wouldn't have known had you had you had one conversation with him. So, rest in peace, draws. Uh, thank you for your time. Thanks, thanks for being a friend, and uh, I love you, man. I'm gonna, I miss him. I uh, I don't know how to sort of transition into the next thing, but I want to do something lighthearted and I want to do something fun. So I, I, if I may, real fast. Yeah, of course. A question for you, sir. Yes, sir. Would you, are you ready to ask me? I would love to. It's time to ask me anything. Ask me something. Don't forget, tweet us your questions using the hashtag ask Meanie, and you may hear us ask them on the show. Meanie, what you got there in your hand, sir? Uh, I've been rocking the polar a lot. So it I got the uh, polar orange vanilla seltzer, which I'll sandman in three, two, one. There we Atta go. Ah, boy. I had my, uh, my seltzer, my sparkling ice that I was, uh, going to save, but I was thirsty. So I apologize. No cheap shit down the hallway these days, friends. Uh, yes, sir. So don't forget to, like I said, tweet us your questions and you may hear them on the show. I'm going to jump into the pot squads questions here. First, Andrew Bailey wants to know, Meanie. Yeah. Do you think Bully Ray could potentially have a future with AEW or maybe Ring of Honor, Ring of Honor rather, now under Tony Khan? Of course. No, um, of course. Uh, it's a matter of do people want his brutal honesty, you know? 
No, uh, I did one show for Ring of Honor right before the shutdown. They brought me as a surprise in one of their 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 version of the Royal Rumble. And uh, yeah, just talking to you know Bully. You know, he had no problem just being honest. And uh, it's a matter of can certain talents uh, accept honesty or, or brutal honesty and look in the mirror and go, yeah, you're right. I should probably work on that. Or, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, apparently he told me, you know, I did my entrance and gang girl did his entrance. And there's some people who remarked, man, why wow, they're, they're getting loud reactions. And bully Ray was like, yeah, because they're superstars. And he had no problem fucking going, yeah, because they're fucking superstars. Right. They carry themselves like stars. They present themselves as stars. You know, you could do whatever you want in the ring, but how you present yourself on the camera and out in public or shit, I'm going to be at, you know, low inside baseball, I'll be at icons tomorrow. Uh, you got to carry yourself a certain way, you know? Some people are more happy being a, a great wrestler than a great worker. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll make some money wrestling, you know, on earth. Atta boy. Listen to that one. Fucking the fucking demon. Sound like a fucking <laughs> dog. Cho- Sound like a dog choking on a bone under the tail. Jesus <laughs> Christ. He'll, just, he'll be fine. Just let him clear it. He'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe don't feed them off the table. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, um, oh, Al, you know, Al Snow had a great line. He's like, you know, wrestlers will make some money, but they'll only make some money. Wrestlers, workers will always know how to make money. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's 2023 and I'm doing some cool stuff. Yeah. You know, between, uh, some things I can't talk about yet and some things I've been promoting. So, you know, I got a couple of things down the line, you know, I just talked about, you know, just working on and finalizing that, you know, hopefully I can talk about soon, but right. that's just through being able to know how to, knowing how to present myself and promote myself and promote the things that I'm a part of, you know, so... Yeah, I became Bully Ray. I know this thing became about me, but hey, you know, Bully Ray's the same way. He knows how to promote himself. He knows how to present himself as a star. And uh, nice fucking cameo. I just watched the uh, two part American Gladiator documentary on uh, ESPN Plus. Oh man! And uh, he's like in the like the ending, like him and one of the creators of uh, American Gladiators, Apache Dan, or good friends and his daughter does stuff with Bully Ray's 3D Academy in uh, Florida. Wow. And uh, yeah, there's a whole fucking like Bully Ray with the guy and they're all decked out in Dudleyville gear and stuff like that. So 2023, you know, Bully Ray's still relevant, whether you agree with, you know, whether people are agreeing with what he says or people shitting on it. The best reaction is, is any any reaction is a good reaction. Yeah, and bully knows the reaction. Uh, and I will say, bully and and Devon are are you know I've talked about this before. Dudley Boys are my favorite tag team of all time. So anytime I can get a chance to listen to Bully Ray talk about anything, I mean, regardless of how you feel about him, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, like the the love the man has for the business is very clear whenever he yeah. speaks about it. And I think that any company, any promotion that would bring him in. Um, would be doing themselves a very solid service for doing so. So um, yeah. let's see here. Machete Von Kill wants to know, ask Meanie, did, she got a two-parter here, two-part, two-part, two-part. Did you finally listen to the new Foos album? I am uh, working my, I've heard like a good portion of it. It's just like, I'm one of those guys where I listen to something new. I kind of need, need to be in a room alone. Headphones on and eyes closed and just taking in it. But like everything I've heard, I love. Yeah. Um, 
And they, they put out some videos too that are really good. Uh, but yeah, I'm, 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 I'm 97% through it. It's just, I'm, I'm a creature of habit where I need to listen to the whole thing through interrupted. Like I'm one of those people. If my favorite, if like say I got a fucking uh, mix of my favorite songs playing, I'm jamming out to like a really good song and somebody starts talking towards it. I'll pause it. I'll listen to what they have to say. And then I'll start the song over. <laughs> that is my fucking car MO dude. Same time. Yeah. Yeah. Same it's thing. like, it's like pause. Okay. You said what you had to say. Okay, cool. Reverse. Mm-hmm. And if I need to listen to this song begin and uninterrupted, so do you. Mm-hmm. And if they don't get the hint, start it again. That's right. Listen, not now, yep. Chief. I'm in the fucking zone. I want to hear this record. So just shut the fuck up for 10 I'm minutes. Jamming. Fucking, I'm, I'm visual. It. I have a show going on in my head at all times. <laughs> Here's a fucking rock concert. There's a rap, a hip hop show. There's all kinds of shit. There's wrestling events. I'm planning out my entrance down the ramp, Chief. Just leave me the fuck alone, okay? I'm thinking I should get that fucking chip implanted just so I could just make my fucking content, you know? Well, you know, they have the goggles now. They have the meta goggles, which uh, I'm kind of afraid of, but I think maybe we could probably do a show with, like, just using the goggles and imagine we're in the room. Uh, would yeah. be pretty cool, maybe. I'm sure the, as we fart, <laughs> though, the, the, the Technicolor lights would come up. We'd probably ruin the system, but Zuck, if you're, you know, you can figure things out, I guess. Uh, Machete Von Kill's second question is, um, will you be firing bottle rockets out of the butt trumpet on Tuesday? Oh, no. (laughs) I'm highly flammable. And uh, (laughs) I've seen enough videos where people try to shoot shit out of their butt cheeks and it never ends well. Yeah. So uh, No, just uh, good old fashioned watching people poster uh blew my hands off posts you know just, there's so many people this week and they don't realize it's their last time with 10 fingers Oof, man i saw something on reddit the other day well an x-ray and it was like somebody's hand that was blown off by a fucking firework and it was like the gnarliest thing i've ever seen i was like oh my god like i would never hold a firework or a bottle rocket if you paid me money to do it but like Never, oh. never, dude. Fuck that. Look, I stayed at the travel lodge of South Philly, and I still would not shoot off a bottle rocket with my hand. <laughs> and I'm saying how stupid that is. Oh. You know, I like my fingers, man, and my hands. They're they're pretty. They're nice. They're well proportioned. Yeah, we're doing the butterfly do- movement. Like we're yeah. in Napoleon Dynamite. You can watch this shit right now, friends, at patreon.com slash mind of the meaning. You're fucking missing out. Uh, yes. Let's see. We got two questions from our friend Mark and Dryden this week. Heard this on another podcast, but you two are the perfect ones to ask this. Out of the four major sports, uh, baseball, hockey, football, and the NBA, in order, which one, in your opinion, is the most physically taxing? I don't know, man. Um, I would have to say hockey. Uh, so it's football, baseball, hockey, and basketball. Basketball. Yeah. I will, uh, shit. Throw soccer in there too. Yeah. Make make five because you know, I mean, you watch soccer and they're running for like ninety minutes straight. Yeah. I'm like, like, bro. You know, you would see me on the fucking side of the fucking court with like a brown paper bag, you know, yeah. hyperventilate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the oxygen right now. Sir, you've only been on the field for two minutes. Oxygen. Yeah. yeah. How long is that hose? <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> God damn. But, uh, you know, football's tough, but, you know, you get to sit out plays. You know, they, you'll, they say you know, somebody did a fucking thing where you know out of a 60 minute game you're maybe getting like 32 minutes of actual physical activity yeah you know but you know the clock you do a play and the clock keeps going you know you know unless there's a timeout or somebody goes out of bounds clock is constantly going so you're not really playing for 60 full minutes right you'll begin it but hockey holy shit yeah of course you take you know there's different lines and stuff like that but still you know the run you know, you know, skate that fast while focusing on a, a 
keeping a stick, walking around the defense, shooting. To me, hockey's like, like super, super, super fucking tough. That does, does, doesn't doesn't get as much as attention as like football. Mm. But it's 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 fucking it, and it's been hard to watch hockey lately because the Flyers fucking suck. But uh, yeah, I would say hockey's pr- pretty tough. Well, yeah, I'm sitting here thinking about. It. I'm just like picturing all four of the sports. Like baseball is definitely like I feel like the least taxing on your body, but um, but plus you get to fucking fight and punch people in the yeah, face, dude. Fucking throw them gloves down and start th- th- shooting off live rounds. Are you kidding? That sounds amazing. Yeah. Um, the, the Kelsey brothers were, were trying to, they just had an episode of their podcast where they had uh, Goodell on mm. the commission and they're trying to push for one hockey fight, legalized hockey fight during the NFL season <laughs> or during the game. Yeah, you know, I love it. Live, you know, just take off the fucking helmet and fucking go to town. <laughs> that would be fucking incredible, man. That would be amazing. Oh, yeah. Um, no, you know what? I think you're right. I think the only, I think maybe number two would probably be basketball um, or soccer. Maybe like 2A and 2B would probably be basketball and soccer just because of the the cardio that's needed to stay. Yeah, basketball. Holy yeah. shit, man. I mean, that's literally, and it's not even like, like skating, you're kind of like, I feel like with your feet, you're kind of just sliding, right? Like you're, you're, you're still, you're still using those, the same muscles, but like, the, the the impact on your feet as you're running playing basketball I'm sure is just not fun but um, no I would say I would agree with that I think I think as far as the mechanics and everything you have to do while you're playing hockey I feel like that's that's the right that's the that's the right call yeah I agree Mark and Dryden has another question for us I was wondering while watching the junkyard dog episode of Dark Side, even though yeah. he never won any titles in WWE, which to be fair is a sacrilege. This isn't Mark and Dryden, that's me. The fact that JYD didn't win any titles is a sacrilege. He became a mm-hmm. way bigger star and made more money there. Doesn't that count for something? He was all over the screen during the rock and wrestling era. Uh, not only was he on the cartoon, if you watch any of his matches, he was over. In terms of popularity, am I crazy to think he was only behind Hogan for a period of time? That's a good assessment, you yeah. know. Sometimes you don't you don't always need a belt, you know, to be over. So you, you could just be an attraction, you know. Yeah, uh, he was over as a talent. Great, you know, entrance, great music, great look, great charisma. But uh, I mean, a lot of people say if you're not trying to win the the world title, you know, win, winning the world title should be your ultimate goal. But ultimately, it's a business, right? So if you're making money and, you know, you're still entertaining and you're becoming the, you know, part of pop culture yeah, to where, you know, even after your career, you can still benefit from, from, from the, uh, the fruits of your wares, you know, your the fruits of your work. I mean, you know, you know, he was definitely up there, him and, you know, and that was the major point of contention with Wendy Rector leaving. She wanted, you know, to be paid, you know, the same as like Hogan. Because she was, she was part of that rock and wrestling revolution as well. Mm-hmm. A huge part of you know the, that thing with Cindy Lauper and everything, and you know, she, she, I think she she deserved to be paid, not as much, but just as close. Because Hulk was you know the face of the company. Pretty goddamn close for sure. Yeah, I mean, the, I don't think a lot of these. I don't think. I mean, obviously, like you said, Hogan was the guy. Right. But yeah. like there's all the ancillary players. Right. And and there's a lot of people that are still remembered from that time. So, you know, I hate talking money. Yeah. No, know, no, especially, no. Yeah. Especially other people's money. But like they were making good money. Yeah. You know, that dark side, they said, you know, he's making quarterly. He was making six figures just from action figures. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Good for him. They said she, well, she got his first check for action figures, like over 80 grand or something like that. <sighs> Holy shit, yeah. dude. Crazy. Yeah. But it's, it's just crazy. I mean, that's the thing, you know. We're not used to having that much money, and you you forget that they don't take taxes out. Yeah. You have to fucking put shit aside so when the tax man comes, you're ready to uh, pay the piper, so to speak. Yep. 
you know, but uh, yeah, they were making good money. I mean, it was taxing. It was as a brutal fucking schedule. Yeah. But uh, you know, now well now with the WWE, they you know down at the uh, performance center, they teach financial stuff. You yeah. know, which I wish would have been like a couple generations before, but it is what it is. But yeah, Junkyard Dog was right up there. Yeah. If he's, he, you know, Hogan was one. You know, he easily. You know, uh, Dog was one B. He was over as all get out, as they say, back in the day. <laughs> I was definitely a mark for him. Yeah, you know, uh, me too. Yeah, I, was a, I, I started noticing with the uh, Dark Side of the Rings, they kind of tie things up in, in a little bow at the end, where you know, even if something ends a little bit, you know, rough, you know, they kind of they go out highlighting the positives of the person and stuff like that. So. Uh, it was cool to hear his, you know, his nephew talking. You know, just like with the uh, Chris and Tammy thing, it was cool to hear that. You know, Chris had, you know, even though Chris had died horribly, yeah, you know, uh, like uh, not hard, like he, him dying was horrible, but the fact that he just got his shit together and a simple broken leg killed him, you know, with with the blood clot, you know. But you know, more people will now learn of Chris Candido and go out and watch and see some of Chris Candido's greatest hits. Just like people should discover Junkyard Dog and learn to have how to have charisma and get over. Yeah, you know. So uh, yeah, Junkyard Dog was definitely over, man. Just um, you know, it's, uh, it's all the other stuff that you know happens in the wrestling business that you know happens in every industry when you're you're traveling that much. Yeah, and living Groundhog's Day every day. You know, you're in the same, you're in the same airport, you're in an airport, you're in a hotel, you're at the building, you're back at the hotel, you're back to the airport and you wash, rinse and repeat. You know, that, that, that can become like a uh, Ren and Stimpy space madness, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine it's difficult. It's just, it's a, it's a really hard life and it's, it's not for everybody, but uh, yeah, Junkyard Dog was one of my favorites as a kid as I'm discovering wrestling, you know, that's, that was the stuff that was on the tapes and, and, you know, the old WrestleMania matches and, and the superstars and everything else. And, you know, JYD was always consistently one of my favorites. So I always, I always enjoyed getting to watch him wrestle. But uh, another thing I enjoy getting to do each and every week, Blue Meanie, is this show and this program with you. And I want to thank everyone who's listening, who sends in their questions to us every week so we can ask them and entertain you and, and provide enlightenment. So, and thank you to our pod squad uh, with the chat. We have a full house tonight. Yeah, it's, dude. it's great stuff, man. I love the love when the pod squad love when the pod squad joins us, and I love when I can talk properly as well. But a question, <laughs> another question for you, sir. Where can everybody keep up with Blue outside of the show and on social media? If you would like to follow Blue Mini on all forms of social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Blue Mini B W O on all forms of social media. If you would like to support the Blue Meanie, go to presslentees.com slash Blue Meanie. If you would like to support Mind of the Meanie, this very show, go to presslentees.com slash Mind of the Meanie. Colin Elbow, the wrestling brand, go to colinelbowbrand.com. Use coupon code Meanie or use coupon code MIND and save 10% on uh, your your total order over, over at uh, colinelbowbrand.com. Shout out to Rod Hicks. Doing great work over there. Now, uh, shout out to uh, Bruce. Bruce um, first day with the new mouth. Uh, it's rubbing off. Uh, shout out. I, I went to read Blue Spruce and I went Bruce Thornton, which is Josh <laughs> Thornton's name. Josh Thornton. Shout out to Josh Thornton over at madcarebeardcare.com with the Blue Spruce Beard Oil and Bomb. Uh, Josh is doing amazing work over there. If you're a cat lover like myself, he uh, rounds up the feral cats. Takes them to the vet, gets them fixed up, get gets them feeling better, back to health. Every dollar you spend at madcatbeercare.com goes to helping taking care of the cats. So go help the kitties. Uh, figure Collections Bone Crushing Wrestling Series Variants 1 of the Blue Meanie are available now. Get yourself an old school uh, Blue Meanie white shirt or a classic BWO shirt. Uh, all Series 1 uh, can be ordered right now at shop dot figure collections.com get yourself a, a blue mini uh, action figure at shop dot figure collections.com 
order today. Uh, to have the Blue Mini on your podcast, go to podstars.net, register on the site, and uh, select from myself and many great guests over there at podstars.net. That is P O D S T A R Z dot net. So uh, go book the Mini today. Shout out to Jim Nelson over at glaciersofice.com. Jim made a three of the three of three only handmade custom BWO Air Jordan 1 sneaker for Stevie, Nova, and myself. Each pair takes Jim about 50 hours per pair. So if you want to see him make these awesome sneakers, sneakers, as we say in South Philly, uh, and then everybody said we call Jimmy Snooker, Jimmy Schnooker in South Philly. <laughs> uh, if you want to see all his awesome sneakers on social media, follow him on all forms of social media at G O I Kicks. That's uh, all forms of social media. I'm not going through it again. Uh, Cameo.com <laughs> slash mini BWO uh, for birthdays, holidays, and well wishes. Uh, I do a couple a week, and there's so much fun to do. It's uh, it's good to uh, get try to do an uplifting message, so to speak, uh, and it makes make somebody's day better. So to go to cameo.com slash blue meanie BWO today, and let's do a video. But uh, most importantly, Mr. Bernard, where can we find you, sir? Me? Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. You can go and find me on all forms of social media, uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, you can find me on TikTok still, which I'm going to start using hopefully pretty soon. I'm going to figure it out for the kids, of course, because my kids, I only have it because my kid, I want my kids to think I'm cool. And Mastodon, at this is Goober. Uh, yes, it's my handle. No, I'm not changing it. It's a brand, pal. You can find me there. You can also listen to my other show, Foundation Radio, which is great because you can find both programs uh, together now that we are a part of the Premier Podcast Network. So you can go right onto your machine there, wherever you listen to your podcast, and find us both there. Uh, you can listen to foundationradio.net. Lots of great episodes coming down the pipeline. Uh, linking back up with my uh, co-hosts, uh, Greg Mead, Jeff Quinn, and Dr. Ruth Almy. We go deep dive into why 1989 is back in 2023. So check it out right now. Brothers Gatter, uh, the very first official licensed Adam Bernard Wrestle Buddy is only available and in very, very limited quantities at brothersgatter.com. So go pick it up today and also get yourself a Blue Meanie Wrestle Buddy. But even better than just the individual, you can get us together. Get yourself a Mind of the Meanie two-pack right now. Brothers Gatter, two-pack, two-pack, two-pack deal, sir. Blue Meanie, two of us together every single day. So you can hold us while, it'd be like we're in the room with you while we record. Brothers Gatter, Chuck. Hold me. Hold me. It's fun. It's Bon Jovi. You can reenact your favorite moments from the show too. And you can act, you know, do the Bon Jovi. Uh, so go to brotherscatter.com, the Feinberg Method. Go to feinbergmethod.com, use promo code Goober and save up to 20% on your purchase, not just physical wellness, but also mental wellness as well. Go and talk to Brad, my trainer, and he will help you out. The feinbergmethod.com. Shout out to the homies at the 10th Ward Barbershop in downtown Lawrenceville, right outside of Pittsburgh. Go and ask for Kane. Tell him Goober sent you. He's Corey Graves and Bray Wyatt and Finn Balor's favorite barber. 10th Ward Barbershop.com. That's 10th Ward Barbershop. Dot com. Tell them Goober sent you. ProWrestlingTees.com slash Foundation Radio. ProWrestlingTees.com slash Mind of the Meanie. Pick up a shirt. Keep the lights on here at Casa de Meanie and the Barnard Home for wayward and troubled youth. Patreon.com slash Mind of the Meanie. Sign up today. Watch us live, record, and listen to the show early and ad-free. We want to thank Manscaped for sponsoring the program this week. And Meanie, I want to thank you for doing the show. Thank you to the Pod Squad, as always, for joining us. For the Blue Meanie, I am Adam Bernard. Join us again each and every week as we take a trip to the mind of the Meanie. Peace. This episode of Mind of the Meanie is hosted and executively produced by the Blue Meanie and Adam Barnard. It was mixed and engineered by Carl Pinnell. Additional narration is provided by the executive voice, Sam Kreps. Our intro music was performed by the Swamp Candles. Our outro music was performed by Chikara. Additional musical accompaniment is produced by Enrichment. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Mind of the Meanie and become our patron on Patreon by going to patreon.com slash Mind of the Meanie. Find our entire show archive at mindofthemeanie.com. This has been a Butts Carlton Media Production, Butts Carlton Proprietor. Blue, 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 blue world order. 
Dad, why does Blue Minnie's brain out? <laughs>